All right, uh, Paulie, you ready? Know your draft pick. Always. All right. Dan, this may be a little tougher than the rest. This is not the traditional white guy cliches that Ooh, have okay. been such a layup for you over the okay. years. This player is described as a smooth player. For some reason that this matters, uh, this matters he's uh, described as a well-mannered kid. Well mannered, as that—that's some type of compliment. Those—that seems like a negative, right. right? He's neither explosive nor quick. He can also be passive at times. Harrison Barnes. Ah, oh, I had more to give you. Harrison Barnes is correct. Oh, okay. They did not use the phrase "low motor" on Harrison Barnes, but that's what we want to hear tonight. And Roy Williams was defensive. He says it's trendy to pick on Harrison Barnes. I think what happened is we expected him to be great. That he was on the first team All American team. He hadn't even played at Carolina, and he was first team. And then all of a sudden, we went, okay, what do you have? He was great as freshman here. He had a lot of uh, game winning shots, I think five, Coach Williams said. But there's still something when you watch him and you say, maybe it's too effortless. Maybe you want something more out of Harrison Barnes. Uh, this guy played against him, Austin Rivers joining us. Do you get that knock on uh, Harrison Barnes that they say that, you know, maybe he's uh, too passive, uh, too mild-mannered on the floor, Austin? Um, you know, I, I like his game. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, just kind of nitpick his game just because, uh, like you said, you know, he was first team before the year started. So he had a lot of just really high expectations. And, um, you know, it's hard, especially for a freshman coming in and, uh, I think he handled it well. I mean, like you said, he had a lot of big shots. And, um, you know, I think he progressively got better and better. Uh, from his freshman year to his second year, he started using his body and his strength a lot more and uh, attacking a lot more. But you get nitpicked now. That It's one thing to be criticized or critiqued when you're playing a Duke, now going into the NBA. What's the best thing you heard? What's the worst thing you heard? Um, well, the best thing I heard is, you know, people think, uh, you know, my game translates more to the NBA, uh, which I, which I agree. And, uh, they just think I can, you know, I can attack and create for myself and for other players at, you know, at any time. And, um, you know, I, I work hard, I'm competitive and, uh, those are the good things. And, you know, really there's only been a couple of bad things and that's just that people think I'm, I'm too cocky and, and little things like that. And, um, what I would say to that is, well, it's not true. Um, I'm cocky in a good way. And um, if you look at any great player uh, in the NBA, they're all cocky. On the on the floor, um, you know, like Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, they all believe that they can they can do what they want, what they need to do. They all have confidence in themselves, and that's what I have. And just because I show it with, with my demeanor or swagger, you know, people might mistake in that for. Oh, he's such a cocky kid. When I'm really not cocky. I'm a low-key guy out the floor, but when I'm on the floor, I have a lot of confidence in myself, and I try to bring that with my teammates and help them out with it. Um, but that's what I did, um, and all my teammates will tell you that. But, uh, you know, when you just watch from a TV screen, sometimes that's, you know, the misconception. Well, they also said selfish. That was uh, one word exactly. that stood out. Yeah, and that's that, that's like the complete opposite of who I am. I, I want to do everything I can to help the team win, anything. And... This year, a big thing for me, for us to, to, to win, was to create and to try to score and try to just make plays for people. And I started getting better at it and better at it uh, towards the end of the year. And um, I was never selfish. Um, I was actually one of the more unselfish guys. I mean, I don't see how being the hardest working guy and, and, and working hard to help your team win and, and try to be a leader and try to create plays for your teammates and yourself and, and, and doing anything you can to win is selfish. Um, you know, and you know, I don't know where that comes from. I just think that comes from just because you score a lot as a guard. People just think automatically oh, selfish. You know, that's just not. But that's that's not true. He's Austin Rivers, the former Duke guard, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Here's our poll question: If you're on the board, should your dad take you? Does your dad have to take you if you're still on the board when the Celtics have their pick? Oh uh, no, he does not have to take me at all. And if he didn't. Um, I would not be angry because I understand it's a business. I understand they, they got to do what's best for him and his team. Um, I don't think I'll be on the board. Um, I don't know what pick they have, but, you know, it is what it is. I can't help with what goes on. If I'm on the board, I'm on the board. All I know is I hope I get picked by somebody. I think I'll get picked by somebody. And, um, you know, I, it's a blessing to, to play for any NBA team, to be completely honest. Wait, um, but you, six- so you haven't talked to your dad about this? Oh, we have talked to my dad about it. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, 
I don't know if uh, what pick do they have? Twenty one. I, I don't yeah. think it'll happen. Uh, I, I really don't think that'll happen. But you never know. And if it does, it does. Um, but uh, you know, I'm just excited for this whole process. Well, it's man. one thing. It's one thing for your dad, as the coach of the Celtics, to say, you know, if you're there, I, you know, I don't know. What What does your mom say about this? That hey, you better take him if he's there. <laughs> Yeah, my dad might sleep on the couch, you know, so we, we got to see what happens. I would think it'll be – is your dad going to be with you uh, tonight? Um, no. Yes, he is coming, actually. He's coming for – he's going to fly in and fly right back to Boston. Um, you know, I think he had to do some rules first because, like, the NBA was hesitant um, uh, because he is a coach, but he is my dad. So uh, – they're going to let him come for a little bit, and then he's going to leave right after. Anthony Davis, a couple of weeks ago when he joined us, wasn't afraid to call out Kobe to say, look, I look forward to it. You know, bring it. Uh, you know, he's, he's obviously unbelievable, but I'm not afraid of him. Who's the guy that you're, you're ready to go after, that you want to play against, that measure yourself against? I mean, for me, it's just anybody. Um, it's just like I look at I look at all the guards that I've grown up idolizing and, and playing my patting my game after, like watching Dwayne Wade and and then and, and Darren Williams and Russell Westbrook and Tony Parker. Like those guys are the guys I want to compete against because um, those are the guys I mean I've, I've looked up to my whole life, and those are the guys I took in all their moves and trying to apply it to my game. So. To finally go against them and compete against them is what I want. I, I think that's going to be so fun. It's going to be exciting, and I'm going to learn a lot. And it's going to be real tough, but, I mean, that's what I look forward to. So, like, yeah, that's why I look forward to playing all those guys. It's going to be fun. You got that YouTube moment when you picked John Wall's pocket in a, in a summer game. Uh, it seemed like that's when people said, oh, wow, okay. It was your uh, coming-of-age moment. Did you realize, I mean, here you are still in high school and you're facing John Wall, the number one pick. Uh, any intimidation? Did you feel a little out of place? Describe that. No, not at all. I mean, that whole thing was, at the end of the day, you guys are, what, two years older than me, three years older than me. Um, uh, and I was in high school. He was going to the NBA. He's like three years older than me. I, I, I've been playing up my whole life in AAU. Um, you know, I've been playing like 16, 17. as like a 14-year-old. So my whole thing was he's just one of the better 17-year-olds or 18-year-olds that's about to go to the league. And my whole thing was I'm just going to go in there and compete. Like you know, I'm not. I, I'm never scared of anybody. I'm not scared to fail. If something wrong happens, you learn from it and, and you move on. You know, but you have to be able to accept failure and you have to be able to accept you know things not going right sometimes in the game of basketball. So I just tried to go out there and I tried to compete and I just played my game and things worked out for me. Um, and uh, that that whole thing was. I mean, it was. It wasn't just it was Brandon Jennings, Demar Derozan, uh, Tyreek Evans. I mean, there's tons of pros there. Um, and that's when you just kind of get a sense where, you know, I can't play with these guys. You know, I, I get better, but I, I can compete with these guys. And uh, since then, I've just tried to work, and now I know I'm ready. Who's yelled at you uh, more intensely, your dad or Coach K? Coach K. Can you imitate him? <laughs> no. Coach, uh, yes, you can. Coach, Coach, Coach K is, is, is uh, I mean, it's unbelievable, though. I mean, I know, I know you're a Maryland guy. Um, you know, someone's there, a Maryland guy. Am I right? Yeah. So, you know, I know y'all have your little thing against, you know, Duke. I, but I, I have Coach K on all the time. I know. I know. But still. Oh, I stop. Saw you at the oh. Maryland game. I, I saw you at the Maryland game. Oh, no, you didn't. No. No, you, well, I, I would. No, 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 no. That was uh, Scott Van Pelt who was there. Not me. Okay. Yeah. We, one of, I, was wondering, I was wondering, one of y'all was at the Maryland game. No, no, I'm not. I, I have Coach K on the time. You're being defensive because you know everybody <laughs> picks on Duke, right? Now you're feeling, come on, get the chip off your shoulder, Austin. <laughs> Don't be soft. All right, all right I agree. Okay. Um, no, I cannot do a Coach K in depression, but I can tell you this. Um, he's probably one of the, I mean, he's like the coolest coach I've ever been coached by, and I don't mean like cool as in relaxed. I mean, he's tough on you, he's going to challenge you, but it's crazy like how much better he can get a player in one year. Did he almost make you cry? I mean, he, he, I mean yeah, because you go into college and you, 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 a, lot of, a lot of us came out of high school and you, you do what you want, you know, and then you get into college and it's Coach K, so you got to do what, you know, he said or any other coach, and, you know, he's going to challenge you to the point where sometimes you were like, what is going on? Like, what what do you what do you want me to do? And um, after you after you start getting hang of it, you realize what he, you know how much better you got just from being around him and just from being coached by him. All right, give me the best best guess where you're going. Don't say I just want to be drafted. Where you think? Um, pro- 
probably, you know, I just want to be drafted. No, no, <laughs> come on. There you go, being soft again. You, you, you're being selfish uh, right now, Austin. Come on. Oh, am I? Yeah. I, come on, I, you got to distribute. Distribute an answer to my audience here. Where do you think you're going? I, mean, I, I feel like, you know, there's a good chance of me, you know, landing, you know, somewhere around, um, you know, I hope just, I think it'll be a lottery pick. So one of those 14. I got you going 10. How's that? Oh, is that is that what you're saying? Yep. Well, we'll see if you're right. I got you no. going to the Hornets. All right. Well, you and Anthony Davis. That wouldn't be bad. No, it wouldn't. But, you know. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. There's a lot of great teams. Um, and then Toronto, you you grow a, a, a uni, Phoenix. you grow a unibrow. No, that that'll never happen. <laughs> that'll never happen. Have fun tonight. Don't wear anything silly that we'll make fun of. All right. Oh, I got a pink suit with a bow tie. Nice, nice. I like that. Hey, uh, good luck tonight, Austin. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Austin Rivers. He say, I didn't know what he was saying. Are you a Maryland guy? I I, I missed that. That's Van Pelt. I guess, you know, all white sports centers we look uh, sports center anchors we look alike. <laughs> you know?